The 2017 Chevrolet Volt. Is this a poor man's Tesla? Is it a real alternative to a Toyota Prius? Or is it something different or kind of in between? Welcome to the latest episode of Car Buzz Unboxing Reviews. I'm Jay, and this is the second generation Chevrolet Volt. I also want to thank Woodland Motors for letting me come on down and film today. So let's get started. So the Chevrolet Volt, it first came out in 2011 and there was a lot of controversy behind it, meaning there was a lot of politics involved, this new technologies, and the general public wasn't really so sure what it was. And that's what I want to clarify for you today. The Chevrolet Volt it is considered a plug-in hybrid. Now this, the Toyota Prius is just a general hybrid the, anything from Tesla is a pure electric. So yes, the Chevrolet Volt is something kind of in between, but I want you to think of the Volt and its technology like this. It's an electric car with a backup plan. Let me explain that. The base power source is an electric motor. So the moment you start up the Volt, it is in all electric mode. That electric motor is powered by a lithium-ion battery, which is located underneath the rear seat. And once that battery is drained, you can also plug in the car as you saw. When the battery is drained, that a gasoline engine, a conventional 1.5 liter four-cylinder engine, is going to kick in and act as a battery generator. It's very interesting technology and it's really just it was clever how General Motors came up with this back in I believe around 2008 and 2009 if not earlier and that's what makes the Volt unique yep there it is how you just plug it in and it takes about 13 hours with a 120 volt circuit to get a full charge but only four and a half hours with around a 240 volt source so with a full charge as an EV, the Volt has a range of 45 miles while cruising around at around 75 miles per hour. But most Volt owners drive it less than 50 miles per day and they just simply recharge it overnight. So it's actually, it's possible to get about 120 mile combined engine electric mode range in mixed traffic conditions. And the gasoline engine, it's rated by the EPA at 42 miles per gallon only. So it's actually not bad in itself, that gas engine. But now combined with the 8.9 gallon gas tank, it, that adds more than 400 miles of EV gas driving range. So basically, people can go weeks or even months without having to fill up at the pumps. And what's also really good about this new Volt is that unlike the first generation car, when you do go to the gas station, you don't need to use premium fuel. Regular 87 octane will work just fine. Now, as you can see in this rear seat, I kind of have a problem with it because it's not very spacious. Yes, you can get three people back there, unlike with the first generation, it can only fit two, but there's just not enough legroom despite a wheelbase that's been extended. I think that's something Chevrolet should really should have put more focus on. But this all new interior, if you've seen the first generation Volt, you're going to immediately see that this new one, it, the, the design here is much more contemporary. In my opinion, the first Volt's interior looked like it was designed by somebody who works at Apple. It was very kind of futuristic, technology focused, and I don't think it appealed to the masses. And Chevrolet needs the Volt to appeal to the masses. And this overall center dash design, I think it's very nice. You have this large touch screen there. It controls Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Chevrolet MyLink, OnStar, Wi-Fi, navigation. Very easy to use. I also want you to take a good look at the choice of colors that Chevrolet went with here. It's very similar to the Chevrolet Malibu Hybrid unboxing review that I did as well. And I, and I complimented that car for its touchscreen colors. It's very sharp. And I think even 
brands like Mercedes-Benz could can learn from this because take a look at also at these large icons. There you go. Very nice. It's it's hard to not hit the right button. So another thing I want you to know about this new Volt, it only came out last year, but they actually <laughs> didn't build enough of them. So 2017 is going to be a bigger rollout year for this uh, second gen car. But the weight of it, because you got to remember, weight for any car it is the ultimate enemy for good fuel economy. So Chevrolet engineers still managed to reduce weight by a few hundred pounds. This new car weighs 3,300 3, pounds instead of 3,700. How do they do that? Engineers removed weight from the electric drive unit as well as the battery pack. And I think people are going to like this more conventional interior design. Transmission, just a CVT, continuously variable transmission. It functions like a regular car, even though the technology itself is different. One theory that I have with the first Volt is that people were intrigued by it, but they were just unsure of it. Range anxiety was a problem. Range anxiety, in case you don't know, that mainly applies to a pure EV when the battery just gets drained completely and you have no place to recharge it and you're just stuck in the middle of nowhere. That will never happen with the Volt. Range anxiety is completely gone because that gasoline engine will recharge the battery and no matter where you are, you can always find a gas station. And what's really nice with that other large electric electronic screen is that the driver can also monitor the power required for cruising speeds. You can also look for public charging stations. The car works for you. So how does it drive? Well, I want to be clear. This is not a sports sedan by any means. I know like the Tesla Model S, that's very sporty. This is not. But I will say this is very comfortable, and when you drive it, it's literally dead silent. You can't even hear when the gasoline engine kicks in. It's that quiet. There's very little wind noise, and the steering feel is actually pretty good. Again, not a sports sedan, but I think it's a really nicely tuned cruiser. Oh, another complaint. There are no power seats in this car, the base model, or the optional premier model. What's up with that, Chevy? Really, you can't include power seats? Yep, and here you go, rear seat space, barely anything. Your knees are touching the back of the front seats, and it's just uncomfortable for, for long driving, even just driving around town. And please, really, we're a middle passenger here. I, I, I don't see it, unless it's a child that, that maybe is just still in a baby seat. I just don't, I don't know why Chevrolet even, even bothered with a middle passenger. Okay, so this is kind of cool. The Volt has always been a four-door hatchback, so the trunk it opens like a hatch instead of a conventional trunk from a sedan. 
and with the rear seats folded up, you get 11 cu uh, cubic feet of cargo room. Fold them down, it doubles up to 22. Just like in every other sedan or a crossover on the market today, rear seats fold flat, extra cargo space. It's nice. Now, say if the Chevrolet Volt, you don't like it for any reasons, um, look at the exterior design coming up here. It's okay. I actually, I kind of like the first generation Volt, its exterior design, and maybe even its interior design better than this car. The reason being is I like that kind of futuristic concept car look. It made it, it, made it look unique. And it was just different, but I understand how Chevrolet didn't want the Volt to be considered too different because it was scaring away buyers. This th this design, it's more conventional. They smoothed out the lines. It's just not quite as edgy. My personal opinion, I like the first generation Volt's exterior design better. But if this car doesn't work for you for any reasons, what are some alternatives? Well. There is the Toyota Prius. There is going to be a new Prius plug-in hybrid coming up this year. But as you saw in my unboxing review of the Prius, its new design is just... It's, it's just kind of weird. Other alternatives, you have the Ford Fusion uh, Energy uh, Sedan, as well as the Ford C-Max Energy Hatchback. Now, those are both plug-in hybrids that offer more interior space and also have a capable gas electric powertrain. But their electric range, the all-electric range, is less. It's only about 20 miles. Now, if your budget allows it, there's also the BMW i3. Now, that also has a range-extending gas generator, too. But I've seen the i3. Many of you, I'm sure, are familiar with it. It, it's, it looks kind of weird as well. It's got a sort of a love-it-or-hate-it design, especially the exterior. A Tesla, well, the most, well, the, the basic Tesla you can get, the Model S, it's very expensive, starts at around $65,000, I believe, and there is the upcoming Tesla Model 3, that is going to be priced at around $35,000, which is what the Volt costs, but it's still a few years away, and Tesla's had some production issues, so it might even be more than three, four years out, who knows? And speaking of pricing, how much does a Volt cost? This car, the base one, starts at just under $35,000. The Premier, there's only two trim levels, base and Premier. The Premier begins at $38,445. But I want you to remember this. For all the United States, there is a $7,500 U.S. federal government tax credit whenever you buy a Volt. And several other states, I believe there's up to around eight or so, that offer additional uh, tax credits. For an example, Louisiana and Tennessee both offer $1,500 tax credits, and Colorado offers a $5,000 tax credit. So bear that in mind just to take some money off that $35,000 base price. It's really a pretty good deal, and you're going to be sp uh, spending so much less money at the pumps. Again, you can go weeks or even a couple months without having to fill up. So I'm out of time for today. Thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions for future reviews, leave them for me in the comment section below. Any questions, also in the comment section. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel here, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.